Hey everybody, I'm Alistair, and we are here today to talk about the new ZT0230. The j slip joint gentleman folder, I guess, are we going to call it? Yeah, you call it a gentleman folder. Can we refer to it then for the And, and so design, which is uh, yeah. pretty hot shit right now. Yeah, apparently, I mean, good things come out of Denmark, especially when it's with <laughs> sharp edges. <laughs> so, what, what is this other one we got uh, laying next to? We it, are though. comparing it against the Benchmade proper, similar design, carbon fiber. With the, the the highest end of the proper. It is the highest end of the proper. That is correct. All right, let's do it. Chop, chop, chop. Nice. What we got for uh, steels going here? So we've got uh, S, not S. No, no S ninety. S ninety. S ninety V. S ninety V and CPM twenty CV. Ah, fantastic! That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. <laughs> let, me, you uh, said it. let me drink a little bit more bourbon. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> twenty CV is the well. I almost want to call it the new hot shit. only because M three ninety was the new hot shit, and then now with the steel tariffs. Um, M390 has fallen out of favor because it's 27% more expensive and everybody has jumped ship and gone to Crucible and used the 20 CV, right, which... You need to get M390 from Bowler. Right. From Bowler, which is not, not an American company. Although, <clears throat> even though every, every ounce of Bowler steel we've ever ordered has come out of Seattle. <laughs> I've never ordered anything out of Europe or China. It's all come out of Seattle, but I'm paying 27% on top of it. But Yeah, but I mean, to be fair, like... S uh, CPM 20 CV. So I'm just going to call it 20 CV from here yeah, on out because yeah, yeah. Uh, bourbon. The, no, the CPM is it's it's, it's irrelevant. It, uh, it's inf it's inferred. Nobody yeah. nobody's going to fucking. Give yeah. Some. So the uh, 20 CV very similar to M390. Molecularly, nearly identical. Nearly identical. However, that tenth of a percent hmm. can make a difference. It That's can. There, are, there are, there are two. There, there are two camps. There's, there's guys on either side, or guys or gals or people or whatever. There's people on either side. Um, I happen to be in the M390 camp only because uh, we've, we've always used it, and uh, we, we did. We are one of the. We did not make the change. We did not go to 20 CV, which I'm sure there's plenty of people who know. You know, um, I don't have a degree in metallurgy, so I'm sure there are people who would just people chime in and be like, eh, they're identical. You're just dumb. I, I can live with that. Yeah, but. <laughs> Benchmade went with the uh, S90V, which my understanding of it is it is a much harder steel. Not necessarily Rockwell's harder, but it's edge retention when not doing extremely like hard use tasks is superior. But but also that speaks to I mean like the brittleness of steel. I hate using the word brittleness when you refer to steel because people picture glass. But if you kind of think of it that way, glass makes an amazing edge because it's brittle, you know yeah. what I mean? So the softer something gets, the edge retention changes. It's, it's like the difference between Japanese and German steel when you're buying kitchen knives. It's but, I mean, we're comparing as far as like gentleman folders. What, what kind of hard use tasks are you gonna use a gentleman folder for? Trimming cigars, cutting a steak? Yeah, not a lot of really hard use tasks. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, sure. like, and then edge retention is gonna be everything for that. However, I mean, it is 20 CV. It's not, it's not a slouch. I mean, that's, a comparable to the highest end steel we offer in our own kind of knives. Well, I mean, if I'm honest, like the kind of tasks you're going to do with these knives, like, I mean, over the course of 10 years, are you even going to sharpen it five times? Yeah, probably not. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you well, can you could cut, you could cut 4,000 cigars with this, and it's not going to matter. Cut just fine. Yeah, it's yeah, not going to matter at all. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will point out if you do attempt to. Uh, According to the internets, and maybe Mike can confirm this, possibly Chad with his neophyte ways. No, I'm nervous. Um, Carving rocks? Yeah, I do is, that a lot. Is <laughs> S90V really that hard to sharpen? Uh, we, we, it depends we, on how you sharpen it. Yeah, we, yeah. we sharpen commercially, so everything's easy to sharpen. I mean, the only thing that's hard to sharpen to us is carbide. Um, but um, no, I mean, for us it's not. I, w I will say we do own quite a bit of S125, which isn't made anymore. There's S S110 is used by Spyderco, limitedly. Yeah. yeah, very limitedly. And, uh, and, and uh, Kershaw, I think, put it in some leaks mm. and shit like that and some shallots. Uh, and S110 uh, is kind of commercially built. S125 was very short. I think they made it for dental tools. They stopped making it because it was uh, beating up their equipment, and we have a lot of it. 
And I will say, um, the knives we have tried to make out of S125, uh, it increases our expendables, like our belts and shit like that, um, eightfold over S30V. Wow. And yeah, S30V, and S30V um, was uh, in an annealed state, was more of a pain in the ass for me to machine than M390 was. In fact, we stopped, I've mentioned this on videos before, we stopped cold turkey with S30V because I was sick of dealing with it. And so we just deleted it from our lineup and we went to uh, N690, K110, uh, LMAX, and M390. And every single one of those I've had an easier time machining. Hmm. Uh, and the S125, I actually gave it to a buddy who has access to commercial machinery that this city owns just to get it faced because it was just eating up belts. Holy and and we, have, we have ceramic impregnated belts. If anybody's a knife maker, like orange blazes, they're ceramic impregnated. They, they last really long. They're kind of expensive, but relatively. And it's just, I mean, it's chewing them up like they're nothing. And so we just, I mean, we have three uncompleted S120 knives, S125 knives upstairs just because they're just a pain in the ass and we don't have the time to deal with it. So, I mean, that speaks to the ability of uh, the S blank family, how hard they can get. And S90, I mean, that, Jesus Christ. I mean, everybody can tell that number's not far off from S125. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all pretty goddamn good stuff. Well, this new ZT is made, well, inspired by true events, right? <laughs> So, it, same way that movies that are inspired by true events, this is inspired by Mr. Anzo, John's Anzo out of Denmark. He makes, <laughs> honestly, like, he makes some fucking awesome knives. We were just flipping through his page, and... This is what, based off the... The Monte Carlo. Monte Carlo, Monte Carlo. based yeah. off the Monte Carlo. Yeah, yeah. and uh, you look, go to his site, Monte Carlo, <clears throat> it's got the same profile, the same... Yeah, yeah it's basically uh, like a production Monte Carlo, I would guess. The same straight bevel here. Um, it is a secondary edge. Yeah. It looked it's like on his flat. site full that flat. it was a full flat. Jesus. I mean, why yeah. would you want to sharpen a full flat, though? It means you're starting the grind over again every time. You're buying a full custom and you're paying $1,000 for it? You just send it back to be sharpened. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure that's, yeah. Yeah. You, know what I, you know what I noticed about this, which is ancillary and, un, and, and not interesting, really, I think, but uh, there are only two ZT <laughs> knives that do not have a ZT logo on the maker yeah, side, yeah. and this is one of the two. Yeah. The other one being the, uh, what's the swoop blade? Is it the 450 or 452? It's the 452. Okay, thank yeah, you. 40. The 450 is the little, the little, the little guy. guy. Yeah. Right. And between these two, I mean, what's the price point of the uh, ZT here? The um, 0230? Gosh, you know, offhand, I'm actually not sure. I'm not either. Yeah, I'm actually not sure. It's new enough, we haven't really seen okay, it through so the shop. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. You're gonna have to Google it, and you're gonna have to put it up here. Okay. All right. Okay. Thanks. Google failed us. <laughs> Google no. failed us. <laughs> no, if I remember correctly, it's in, it, it's roughly in the lower 200s, like 230 to 250. I think it is about 230, actually. Yeah. 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 Well, it's yeah. probably right in like what's what's the uh, what's the Benchmade retail for? It's between two and 210. It's something. Uh, so no, 210. Okay. Yeah. So, but that's that's minimum advertised price. Yes. We sell at. That MSRP is, is going to be more so. So right. no. Yes. So it would come in a little a touch cheaper. Because the price that we're probably also going to put up for this is going to be minimum advertised yeah, price, yeah, not yeah, MSRP. That's true. Now, we don't sell anything at MSRP, so we kind of don't care about what MSRP is. They are is. both carbon fiber. However, I actually really like the lanyard loop that ZT pulled off here. It seems like a little bit more robust more because so it's than, aluminum. More yeah. so than this one. And it, but this one it runs through steel. But and a steel backspacer. ZT fucking flared it up with their classic blue here. Uh, oh, I see. Color-wise, okay. Yeah. Okay. No, you know, it, it gives that little bit of flair there. It makes it look. I, I don't want to say cheaper, but it it makes it. <laughs> I don't want to say cheaper. No, I, it makes like, it look like shit. I'm inferring no. that. <laughs> not necessarily. Not necessarily cheaper, but like. Uh, you see a lot of cheap Chinese knives. They do all sorts of garish colors. And all yeah. sorts well, like of every every Pakistani knife on the market, yeah. they just can't stop putting file work on it. It's like yeah. just, just just stop. Tone it down. Just stop. Just tone it down a minute. And it's kind of like that, but at the same time, I know this is a ZT. It's got the three fucking bolts in there holding it in place. I feel like that'd be a pretty secure grab. Plus, it's a little bit outshot from it. So when you reach in your pocket, you get that indent. 
when you're reaching for it, which is kind of oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, I get it. You also get the, a little bit more pronounced of a sheep's foot. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's a Warncliffe. This is a fucking sheep's foot. And <laughs> I learned that the hard way. Thanks, Internet. <laughs> And then another did thing... You get, did you get called out on a previous video? I did. <laughs> Isn't that the best? Yeah. YouTube comments. And then... This Never read is, any. That's a goddamn worn clip. I know. I don't, I, don't, I don't read them on purpose because I don't handle criticism well. Uh, well apparently I'm a womanizer. <laughs> well, good for you. Yeah. Fuck I'm going to have to go back and read some of these comments. I know. <laughs> General Burnside over here is pulling some tail. <laughs> Mr. Ambrose. Jesus. Um, but yeah, I mean, you look at it and there's one major difference... And it's a weight-saving difference between the two. Oh, the Linus. Ah, look at that. What do you notice that's different? Well, um, open construction. There's no spring. Well, there's also no liners. Yeah. Which, if you look at this, it's, this is going to be difficult for us to capture on camera. But if you look in, so the, 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 the carbon fiber is recessed. And liners run about, I'd say, 80% of the carbon fiber. And they're recessed in. And what they use to get instead of a traditional slip joint where uh, the steel will uh, cause the friction. What they use on here is dual detents. Mm -hmm. uh, so they basically it's pinched by steel springs with dual detents. And so what they've done is they halfway through the halfway through the motion, they've drilled a detent. And so it catches, which is a nice detail. I really appreciated the fact that even though they didn't build it well, actually, I'm probably speaking directly towards uh, Anso's engineering skill and his uh, that, that aesthetic ideal. That is actually ideal. an impressive way to save weight. Mm -hmm. The fact that they did that, the fact that he had the forethought to say, I want it to function exactly the same, but I want to do it my own way. The fact that they did a half stop, I really appreciate that. But the fact that there's no liners through it, and and a completely open back, it feels a little. It feels like shots across uh -huh. the bow for Benchman. I, well, can it almost, I? Almost can feels I, fragile. Can I tell you why I don't appreciate that? Why? why? I'd be I very. I was hoping we can get this on camera here. Oh, we can. You can push it right past the half stop. Oh, I no, see. Absolutely no issue at all. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, I see that. Whereas right. that is at a different that, angle. If I was holding it upright, I could get it closed pretty much with one so stick of my finger. You could, uh, with the wrong amount of usage, this Absolutely. would close on you pretty easily. Absolutely, which usually Whereas this wouldn't. It's it's not like a big concern for me, but this the. It, but in the, the but in the knife community, accidentally closing yeah. on you that's a that's, that's a, a game that's th a no go. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a that's a that's a killer. Like you can't you can't do that. It's an interesting take, and like I, I like the design and I appreciate the ingenuity, but the half stop is weak. The detent's a little bit weak. Well, okay. I would agree. Like you're out in public and you pull this thing out and you accidentally cut yourself because you. Uh, now you look like. A, yeah, you got your fingers right there almost now all you the look, time. Now you look like a dipshit. Yeah, you <laughs> pull out the badass knife and try and look cool and you fucking cut yourself. Now, on the flip side. <laughs> can you put this steak to go? Because I need stitches. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to the hospital. How many of you have gotten or have used a slip joint where you basically rip your fingernail off? Well, there's oh, a middle ground. Over the fucking thing. I agree. Ground. I like, agree. we're not looking at Great Eastern Cutlery here. You no, know what I mean? no, we're talking but about But neither of these would you benches, have to uh, do that for, though. Buck. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. The Great Eastern Cutlery. Neither are one of these. Hold on, I got, a, I got a question, though. So, Case. with this one. Yeah. Oh, there's some cases. There's a, we have a Tony Bowes case custom. That's a pain. Dude, it, oh, it, I mean, that's like a $650. My fingernail rips off every time yeah. I open it. That's a $650 yeah. custom Tony Bowes slip joint and I mean it is like geez I'm gonna lose part of my yeah. thumbnail getting this thing open now here's my question with this it's uh, I don't know if it's a plus or a minus but I can take it and just kind of pull it open I don't think I can do that with the proper no it's hard but that you can do it it's yeah okay you can do it it's manageable that's not something that I'm gonna it's want to do I would whip it out not, like that it's yeah. not fluid for it's sure not not something you're gonna be wanting to do on that's a constant true. basis you're gonna definitely use two hands every time so it helps yeah. with opening with that same reason as why I can do that and just mm -hmm. cruise mm -hmm. right past mm -hmm. that half stop it's but at the same time like someone who chews their thumbnails right yeah I I actually see that as really appealing and I think it's a cool design because <laughs> I had a look. Well, there, there, there's yeah, two options. It's, got the, it's oh, yeah. got the half open. You put your hand on the blade. You trim your cigar. I, I like that. Shut yeah. it. 
I do like that half side. That's kind of a baller move is to fucking open it halfway and trim a cigar and put it away. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I kind of dig that. And then weight-wise, the proper... Full, full liners, though, which is, I mean, it's, it's weight, but it's strength. I don't mind the weight. It's I, not like this is heavy. Yeah, you know that's, what I mean? that's let's, true. Let's not joke. These are not hard use knives. No, for they're sure. not. They don't even have a fucking clip. I, so, I really like the gold liner on this, though, compared to that blue. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever, it's gold. <laughs> the blue makes it pop, though. And I think the brass makes that pop. Like, I know. You know, yeah, it makes it look a my, lot nicer. I am worried about the blue getting overplayed because the blue liner is now a thing. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, mm -hmm. it's all over the place. I mean, even Kaiser's doing it. That's yeah. going to rub off, too. Yeah, it is. It's going to show wear. So this this is a true, this, in my opinion, is a true gentleman's folder. It's carried only in my tux, in my pocket. It's lighter. It disappears. It doesn't drag anything down. It does not appear in my pocket. In my chest pocket right here on the outside. Bam. See, I feel like in a, you can't even tell I have it. In a chest yeah. or a jacket pocket, that might be a thing. But and this then is you not pull it out. heavy enough. Yeah, to, that's not heavy enough yeah. to make that much of a difference. It really isn't. It's not. It just isn't. I don't. You know what though? We had we had talked about this earlier. You can see it. So I said I feel like maybe in a jacket or like a shirt pocket, but in like if you put it in a leather slip and it's in your your. It just disappears. Pocket, yeah, I, I kind of that doesn't I, really bother I, me. I, no, and I I really have a thing. I don't like things in shirt pockets. Um, I mean, you can't tell. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know uh, you know what we brought up earlier though, uh, um, off camera. Uh, is the density of the carbon fiber used. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whereas uh, if you look at the tightness of the weave, this is there's no way this is going to be picked up on camera. But if you look at the tightness of the weave across the fillet on the side of this carbon fiber and the tightness of the weave across the fillet on this carbon fiber, this is much denser. On, on the Benchmade versus, versus the ZT. The, ZT. Yeah. the Benchmade has a denser carbon fiber weave, which... I mean, call it what you want, whether you want lighter weight or whether you want a higher strength, it doesn't matter. But generally, as far as I'm concerned, the denser weave is usually considered a higher quality carbon fiber. And even if you look at this, this will easily pick up camera. Look at the tightness of the weave. Look at the tightness of the weave. Mm -hmm. This is easily almost twice as dense, just even looking at the pattern. It, it does just look nicer for, as carbon fiber goes. This looks nicer. It's kind of like it's almost like not rough but it was roughed up you know like yeah exactly like even when you run that across it i mean it's smooth as glass mm -hmm. but you can feel every weave in this thing as you run your hand out mm -hmm. you can feel that now personal preference if they released a version of this which it's zt they're never going to do it because they don't do anything else but carbon fiber and titanium and stainless steel if this was in some sort of like micarta, maybe like an ivory micarta or like a natural like brown micarta. Be a fucking winner. It's worth mentioning. It'd be a winner. It does come. <laughs> it does come in, in a micarta <laughs> option. The benchmade does. I know. Does. <laughs> I will, uh, but I will also point out that I have felt and opened numerous benchmade proper's. Yeah. Not all of them have the fucking same spring tension. As this one, well, I mean, hands. yeah, and but I have opened close ones. Enough. But no, that's a relative thing, though. No, it is not a relative thing. I have opened ones where I actually had to put my nail on the fucking neck oh, to, to open to it get up. it going. And it's okay, but, fucking hard. But knives break in, and that's not that's not uncommon knowledge. No, knives break in. Knives break in. However, I know that out of the box, that ZT is going to be effortless. This is out of the box. I mean, Jesus Christ, we, uh, you know, we've opened this thing. <laughs> This we've is opened the this time, time. We've opened it more times on 13th. camera than we've opened it at all in general. Uh, I will say this. Here, here's, here's what I really like about the ZT. The blade design's better, and that's just gonna. That's yeah. just a fact. Yeah. Uh, yes, I'll, we'll I, I don't. One, I don't sure. have a problem. I don't have a problem with the proper. Proper. I do like it. It's and, and it works for what it is. But when I look at it compared to the ZT, I I want this blade in this handle. Which, although it almost seems like I'm trying to make it more hard use than it needs to be. Yeah, yeah. Either I, I one. Say I like this one, blade design You myself. like that blade design yeah, better? I'd this much loop. rather have it. Mm -hmm. No shit. Okay, all right. I, well, good. Then I'm going to brought it up. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I would, I would really enjoy this. The only problem I have with it, well, namely that, is that <laughs> that goes. But exactly. I... 
I like that Anso and ZT got together, Kai USA got together. You know, I don't think you go that far. Nobody cares. No one cares. <laughs> yeah, well, the parent company of Shoon. Yeah, the conglomerate <laughs> company got together, and they thought, how can we distill the gentleman's folder to the most basic concepts? I bet Anso already did that R and D. All fucking all. Yeah. But well, I mean, it's like it's, you're like it's lighter. It opens effortlessly. It has a perfect draw. The minute you pull it out of the bag, and you can throw it in your pocket, and it just disappears. But, uh, I, but you don't have to. It, even that makes a noticeable difference. I can have this in my pocket and forget about it. This is the perfect occasional use knife, and it's it's fancy enough that you you, you can take it somewhere and not feel embarrassed doing something with it. And this... If you're pulling out a knife in public, it, I'm not embarrassed. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is almost approaching jewelry. This oh, is yeah. approaching daily. Ah, uh, I see what you're saying. That's the big so difference. This is, uh, this is almost, this is almost low-end William Henry, then. That's what I'm saying. It's like you, you, put a, you put a little ruby here. Right. <laughs> you put a little gold inlay back here. You, got a little, you, know, you yeah. increase the price by four times, and you got a little William Henry. Yeah. You know what? But, I, but I what, really appreciate the design that went into it because they <clears throat> sat down and they said, "But what does the proper do wrong?" I think you're giving the, this, I think you're giving the credit to the wrong place. I, no, I I without putting too fine a point on it, I think you are giving the credit in all the wrong places. Okay. I think the only thing ZT did with this is have the foresight to. Uh, see an Anzo design and mass market it, all credit and engineering and yeah. thought and all that goes to Anzo. Anzo made this. CT figured out a way to make a lot of them in a day. And they did mm -hmm. figure out a way to make it like pretty uniquely ZT. You know what I mean? Like if ZT was to make a slip joint, like this is obviously fucking it. Yeah. Well, and that, that used to be the thing with ZT can, is can they were like military Kershaw. The way it is? No, nah, no, you can't because it doesn't slip through a joint. Yeah. It's just a, it's a double, it's a double detent friction. Yeah, folder. yeah, yeah. It's really but all it's, it is. Like I like, like the, the way pub. how smoothly it opens. Okay, the pub, right? The pub is just a friction folder. It's not mm -hmm. a slip joint. Mm -hmm. The 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 Kershaw pub. <clears throat> Google it. Uh, so the Kershaw pub is a friction folder. It's not a slip joint. This is the same thing. It just happens to have two detents drilled into the blade, which causes it to stop and mimic the action of a slip joint. Yeah, that's true. But it is not a slip joint. It mimics the action of one. It, look at uh, Google Bill Rupel. You want to know what a fucking slip joint is? Google Rupel, R-U-P-L-E. That motherfucker makes a badass slip joint, and this is not it. No disrespect to Anzo, but he has found a genius way to mimic that action, and he has reduced weight significantly. To make it smooth as fuck. And to, dude, I mean, he, he, took, he took three things that, that exist separately and put them into one knife, and he did a really good job at it. I'll give it, I'll give it that. I'll give it that. My carta. If it had my card, I'd be like, winner. I think that defeats the purpose. No. It's never going to be my card from ZT. Yeah. You know what? This is never going to happen. Has ZT ever used my card? Never. Not, not that I'm aware of, yeah. I, I, even on their fixed blades, it's all G10 yeah. and steel. That's all they G10 and steel, G10 and steel. Do you think about making my card? What, 3DK making a my card a fucking folder? No, for this. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, sure. The machine does all the work. <laughs> I'll just spend four days building prototypes and fucking around with it. Wait, how many. Uh, how many